And here's another tidbit of bycatch from the world of Starlow Gets Real. At this time of year, I love targeting big dusky flathead in shallow water on larger, unweighted plastics like this squidgy whip bait. It's a specialised technique that I've devoted an entire immersive e-magazine to, and it's revolutionised my flatty fishing. On this particular day, I was rewarded with a solid hookup in the first half dozen or so casts, and while obviously no monster, it turned out to be a feisty dusky of a little over 62 centimetres in length that fought all the way to the landing net, as they usually do. The past couple of seasons, my flatty fishing has taken a new angle thanks to my involvement in a couple of research programs being run by the New South Wales Department of Primary Industry. Myself and several other anglers are collecting small fin clips from legal sized fish for DNA analysis as part of a research program into dusky flathead stocks along the east coast. It's important to avoid cross-contamination of the samples, so careful handling and cleanliness is critical. The fin clips go into a small numbered vial full of alcohol and are then refrigerated until they can be delivered to the research facility. The fish are then returned to the water, little the worse for their experience and their contribution to science. A few casts later I found myself connected to a significantly larger flathead. As the big flatty nears the boat, I back the drag off a couple of clicks in readiness for any last minute pyrotechnics that these fish are so renowned for. It's definitely the sort of flathead I'm looking for when using this shallow water technique, and I'm kicking myself a bit for not bringing the bigger Enviro net. But if you're careful and you've got a game plan, it's amazing just how large a fish you can fit into a smallish net. The biggest danger is ending up with one of those trailing hooks stuck in the mesh on the outside of the net, but on this occasion it all came together quite nicely in the end. Yes! Correct handling and minimum time out of the water are important with these big girls and I've got a couple of jobs to do. First an accurate measurement of length a whisker over 800 millimetres. Next, a fisheries tag is carefully inserted into the base of the second dorsal fin. Then it's time to collect that all-important DNA sample for later analysis and to place it in its vial. Finally, the big breeder is swum for a few moments before being set free as close as possible to the point of capture. Catching big flatties in shallow water like this is a blast in itself, but being involved in research as a citizen scientist makes it doubly rewarding. Tight lines. Make sure you subscribe to Starlo Gets Real to receive regular updates. It's free. And while you're at it, check out my Starlo Fishing page on Facebook and my blog site, Tightlines.